This Beyond Clean Articles on the Go feature is titled, Don't Let Fenders Monopolize Your Storage Space, How to Get Your SPD Out of Consignment Jail. Written by Hank Balch, founder and president of Beyond Clean. Let me quell the rebellion right here at the outset. Many CS SPD departments around the country could not operate without extensive consignment agreements with their local vendors. High-volume ORs with limited capital budgets would not be able to support their cases without these mutually beneficial agreements. Vendors agree to let their instrument tray live at the facility for use at any time, and in return, the facility provides the vendor with valuable in-house real estate to store their trays. Particular agreements could get more or less complex, but that's the gist of most CS SPD vendor consignment agreements. So what happens when you walk into a department that has been overrun with these kinds of consignment agreements? When every square inch of storage is taken up by vendor X or vendor Y, and you still have your own instrument trays that need a home, how do you get your department out of consignment jail? Here are a few tips on posting bail for your department square footage. 1. Says who? Contract lost and found. First things first. As you begin getting a lay of the land as it relates to your consignment kingdom, you'll need to locate all current consignment agreements and contracts your facility has on file. Once you start this process, you may even be surprised to find out that many of the trays you assumed or had been told were on consignment actually are not. They are stowaways who somehow got past the facility gatekeeper, either knowingly or accidentally, but have no actual paperwork to validate their stay. Unfortunately, this does not mean they can be immediately thrown overboard. We'll get to the reason why not on the third point. But definitely take note of which trays are just camping out on your turf without contractual reason. Secondly, for those trays that you do not have consignment paperwork for, skim the contract to confirm tray titles and contract terms. Since different vendors could have been consigned at different times, you'll want to make sure everything is current and up-to-date before you make any changes. 2. Usage Data and Doctor Utilization Once you know which trays have a license to live in your department, now is when you run the numbers on how frequent a flyer those instrument trays actually are. Do you have an entire shelf of ortho consignment trays that weren't used once last year? Or do you have 20 neuro consignment trays that were pulled once every month or so? This is the information that you will need to take to your perioperative leaders, supply chain, and whoever else is involved in your world when it comes to signing consignment agreements. Low-usage consigned trays should be the first on the chopping block to free up valuable space in your shop. As you have this discussion on usage data, however, make sure you include physician users who may have plans or intentions regarding consignment instrumentation that you're not aware of. Perhaps they're planning to switch to a new system altogether so you can boot out 15 trays and replace with 5. Or maybe you can work with your facility leaders to decide on one primary spine vendor as opposed to three, thus clearing out an entire swath of golden shelf space. Regardless of what's done, it has to be done with good data and good physician input. 3. The SPD Space-Time Continuum You have the contracts, you have the data, and you have the doctor buy-in. Now it's time to clean house. But, as I stated at the beginning of this article, few of us have the luxury of going 100% consignment-free, so that shouldn't be your object here. Rather, use this as an opportunity to find the consignment sweet spot, the SPD space-time continuum, where you are only giving storage space to the consignment trays that are actually being used, which are the ones that are actually making money for your facility. However, even here you'll need to be careful not to make a decision solely based on previous contracts or absence thereof, or even poor historical utilization. Especially for trauma facilities, there may be trays that are rarely used, but always needed on standby. The important point here is that this only describes certain trays. The vast majority of your consignment inventory should have persuasive usage data attached to it, or it should be shown the door. Moving forward, you can make usage an aspect of your facility's consignment policy and then review with the vendor during their annual inventory audits. This will keep everyone on the same page at all times. If you feel like you're drowning in consignment trays, I hope this post gives you a few ideas on how to start the long, hard swim to the shore. If you're wanting to put your data collection and consignment process into overdrive, check out a few of the loaner consignment management systems on the market. 
and look into leveraging them to improve your facility's consignment management. Whatever you do, don't let your vendors forget that consignment is a privilege, not a right, and be willing to break the chains if you need to.